good evening one and all who have joined us for uh, the provisional accreditation by nac for the colleges and uh, uh, i i am overwhelmed with all the love what uh, uh, most of the participants have for uh, the programs of adhyapana and uh, just a small introduction about adhyapana we are uh, a, a sole proprietorship firm registered under msme and uh, we are into skill engineering uh, so when we talk about skill engineering the name adhyapana itself says to facilitate learning so learning at all the various levels whether it be individuals groups or the organizations we are facilitating that learning process and uh, 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 we have planned a lot of programs uh, in terms of individual learning uh, that be uh, inter intrapersonal skill development programs we also have uh, the train uh, train the trainer programs we also have uh, uh, programs for the institutions especially the education institutes where uh, we offer uh, quality enhancement uh, programs uh, let that be for the student development or the faculty development or quality enhancement process uh, and the quality accreditation process so we we support in all that uh, our uh, major areas of uh, uh, expertise is into uh, the soft skill development training and also accreditation training and uh, uh, hand holding for the accreditation we usually call it as a quality enhancement process so uh, as a part of our quality enhancement process uh we have uh, designed this program uh, of uh, provisionally accreditation which is uh, offered by nac and uh, a lot of details will be given on the provisional accreditation uh, they have started the process from yesterday so um, we'll have to look into how many of the colleges would go for provisional accreditation so uh, here goes the uh, the details i hope people can see my screen the ppt on the screen okay uh, uh, so the program uh, for next one one and a half hour would go with uh, the provisional accreditation process for colleges it is uh, in short called as pact and uh, uh, most of you know me uh, my name is dr maya salimat and uh, i happen to be uh, the executive director for uh, adhyapana uh, the founder member and uh, we have a team of uh, external consultants and we have a team of uh, 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 most of the educational uh, uh, academicians and we have uh, a team from uh, industries also so um, to start with the business why accreditation most of the people here you know uh, who have joined us today uh, 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 i would uh, say uh, academicians rather than academicians i call them as uh, intellectual uh, people who have joined us and and uh, at least 80% of your agenda of joining this program you want to know why is this accreditation required and how do we get our college accredited uh most of them who have joined earlier for the previous programs they have uh, uh, got in detail about how do we go about with the nac nba or uh, you know implementation of outcome based education and all but all together you know all these programs whether it be nba nac or uh, outcome based education all of this is focusing or supporting us for the accreditation why is accreditation required uh one when you your institute is accredited there is a different recognition given for you uh, like you know you usually say i am from an accredited college i work for an accredited college or you know your students say that you know i have i am studying at an accredited college or you know the alumni of your college can uh, proud uh, you know proudly state that you know they are alumni of an accredited institute higher education institute right so and and you know i have seen uh, recently there has been a fashion that uh, uh, every college which gets accredited they have their uh, uh, 
accreditation status mentioned on their you know brochures website and everywhere so that gives a, a different uh, recognition for the institute altogether then you can also attract a lot of enrollment uh, you know uh, nowadays you know there are a lot of colleges which are mushrooming uh, the other part of the story is there are also a lot of colleges which are shutting down, but uh, uh, equally, you know, there are a number of colleges which are coming up like, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a neighborhood. So uh, when it comes for, you know, students selecting a college for their uh, uh, degrees or programs, they would always look at the best college. Now, when we talk about the best, they look at all the quality inputs of the college through which they can uh, have the holistic development. So uh, if the college is accredited, you have an option that you can get a uh, good number of enrollment, that is admissions. Right. And accreditation nowadays, you know, again, there is a new trend. Whenever you apply for an AICT for certain uh, funding, whether it be conference or whether it be, you know, uh, development programs or you talk in terms of uh, uh, research funding, if it is an AICT uh, program, then uh, it asks for whether your college is an NBA accredited. And if it is not an AICT program, they ask whether your institute is uh, accredited by NAC. Right, so this has become one uh, one basic eligibility that your institute, uh, uh, you know, if you if you want to attract the funds from the agencies, you need to get accredited, and it will also help in capacity building. Uh, uh, you know, I have seen uh, though Tamil Nadu has uh, uh, Tamil Nadu is highest number uh, accredited colleges. You know, the total number of uh, accredited colleges in Tamil Nadu is very 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 higher than any other state in india so uh, there you know i have seen uh, because i am associated from, from uh, with some colleges there i have seen a uh, lot of uh, you know their requirement institutional management requirement is they should get nac they should get nba then they should go for autonomous and you know after certain years of autonomous they want to get into as an you know private university or deemed to be university so this will help the institutes for capacity building whether it be in terms of you know moving from one level of uh, enhancement to the other level that is accreditation to autonomous to the university status and uh, when you have that autonomy you also have that uh, uh, you know status of uh, increasing your faculties increasing your uh, number of uh, intake, increasing your syllabus, I mean, um, what we say, increasing your number of programs, all that. So that is what I mentioned in terms of capacity building. And uh, a lot of collaborations when, when we talk uh, regarding the uh, placement or, you know, the industry interactions or, you know, we, we have certain uh, cells called uh, industry interaction cell or, you know, or you talk about uh, uh, any collaborations for the certificate programs and other things. Most of these companies also who come in for the educational institutes, they also look for the accreditation. So these are five basic, uh, uh, you know, uh, common areas where accreditation will help you. And there are many more which I have not listed. Uh, most of you know. And coming to the accrediting bodies in India, we have this NAC and NBA. And uh, um, you know, both of them are autonomous. One is funded by UGC and the other one is funded by AICT. Or, uh, and uh, you know, when it comes to NAC accreditation, you have the grading from A++ to C. And when it comes for uh, um, NBA, it is like, you know, you get accredited for two years or five years, you know, two years, three years or five years. And uh, NAC accredits the whole institute, but uh, when it comes to NBA, it is usually accrediting only the technical programs. Uh, only, only the colleges which are AICT approved, only those colleges and the specific programs, that is specific departments in those, uh, uh, you know, in those colleges can go for accreditation. So that is the basic difference, which uh, uh, I keep telling, you know, most of my NAC or NBA related programs. Okay, now uh, in 2020, there was a, uh, what, what I can say is a, a benchmark, a benchmark for education system. Uh, 
as you know our honorable prime minister uh, dr uh, you know um, shri narendra modi ji has uh, um, you know has had uh, developed a policy on the education system in india and uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, favorable unfavorable debates happening on uh, a national education policy in some states national education policies already implemented and you know uh, most of us have heard a lot of uh, uh, you know programs on national education policy all said and done uh, the major agenda behind uh, the national education policy when it comes to the quality education system is uh, uh, that you know they want to set up a suitable graded accreditation system Uh, within the span of 15 years of the uh, you know implementation of uh, national education policy and uh, they are focusing on um, you know all all the higher education institutes to become the self governing institutions wherein each institute should be focusing on pursuing the innovation and excellence in terms of teaching learning process so this is the basic agenda under uh, you know connecting the national education policy with the assessment Uh, assessment and accreditation system and uh, it is also heard that you know uh, there will be one single accreditation body in india which will take care of all the kind of accreditation uh, so uh, you know that is not announced so far but uh, they are they are in the process of working on that okay so um, coming to okay so coming to the difference between the accreditation that is the regular accreditation of nac and the provisional accreditation the difference so uh, when we talk about the regular accreditation it was accrediting college in terms of you know a uh, a plus plus grade to the c grade and uh, wherever the institutes get d grade it is not accredited but when it comes to provisional accreditation the difference is your college you know if if you are through the accreditation process you will be provisionally accredited or you will not be accredited there are only two options but wherein wherein for the five year uh, cycle you know one cycle of five years then you have those eight grades under which you are uh, you get accredited and uh, uh, the data which you will have to submit for the regular accreditation process is five year data but uh, when it comes to provisional accreditation the previous completed academic year data you will be submitting uh, irrespective of any number of years your college is into establishment and uh, uh, your regular accreditation uh, certificate is valid for 5 years when it comes to pac it is it, it is valid for 2 years and after 2 year you can again go for an one more pac like you know you can go for pac only for two terms not more than that and uh, when it comes to uh, uh, regular accreditation you can go for any number of cycles usually i have seen four is the highest cycle which is uh, uh, you know uh, for a college uh, fourth cycle that is you know around 20 years 20 years they are accredited but here when it comes to pack it is only two year uh, two times uh, like first year when you are getting accredited it is valid for two years and then again after completion of two years once you go for uh, pack again then it will be two years after that you cannot go for pack you will have to go in for the regular accreditation that is that is how the uh, process is and uh, the peer team uh, you uh, in your regular accreditation you have on site peer team that is the peer team will come down to your campus and do the accreditation uh, i mean uh, do the um, verification of documents and other things and when it comes to the pack most of the accreditation will i mean most of the peer team visit that is uh, validation and verification of data would be on uh, virtual uh, platform and uh, uh, the grading there in the regular accreditation was 0 to 4 grade all the scores were given on the 0 to 4 scale grade and uh, when it comes to the uh, pack it is 0 to 2 scale these are the basic information of the difference between the accreditation regular accreditation and the pack now what is the objective of pack Uh, why uh, you know when we have a process of uh, uh, nac from almost uh, say 1994 to till now now why is this pack all about or or why did all of a sudden pack come into the picture what happened is there there has been you know uh, i don't know how many of you have gone through the nac website and uh, on the website there is a report which says that uh, in india 
uh, you know whatever number of uh, types of institutes we have like you know we have autonomous we have universities we have self health science universities yoga institutions sanskrit institutions uh, you know teacher education institutes uh, whether that be you know an affiliated college autonomous or the university mode though a number of when we look at the total number of institutes higher education institutes in india we see that there are hardly 10% hardly 10% of the institutes getting accredited now the reason is uh, you know when when nac had done a lot of uh, research they have done a lot of programs they have done uh, a lot of interactions with the uh, stakeholders they found that the reason is most of these colleges you know who are not prepared for the regular accreditation of you know five year they lack either in the documentation process you know they lack either in quality enhancement process or you know sometimes you know most of us also know uh, because we work with the uh, private institutes many a time uh, it happens like you know all of a sudden one fine day management wakes up and tell you that you know we want to we should go for nac or we should go for nba and then you know you start preparing for the that right you take time and you prepare for that uh, whether it be two years five years or you know whatever number of years that becomes uh, you know that becomes one setback so uh, to you know to facilitate to facilitate mo uh, the increase in the number of institutes and you know connecting to the um, national education policy uh, you know having you know self uh, uh, self sustained institutes or self reliant institutes wherein you know they should be focusing on the quality education also so uh, to to start you know the the system the culture of quality education system pack has come into picture now what is the objective uh, the objective here is the horizon of accreditation has to be widened because of pack you know and and one year data most of the institutes will get accredited though it is provisional but any given point of time you know provisional accreditation and you know provisional accreditation is like you know you have your provisional degree but not the convocation document right so there is a difference so uh, provisional accreditation is always you know uh, he which helps you which helps you to start the culture of uh, quality enhancement and coming to uh, you know uh, the second objective it wa you know nac wants to accommodate all the non eligible colleges for accreditation you know i have heard a few participants telling we are a, a 15 year old we are a 40 year old but still we haven't gone for accreditation it is not that you are not eligible but it is because you know uh, some some lacunas are there right so uh, so here what what nac is expecting is you know even even though um, uh, some colleges in in fact if you go if you want to go for the regular accreditation your eligibility is you need to have two batches passed out or um, or you need to have the uh, six years of existence so either of these two now uh, now when you when you have when whether you fall into this category you don't fall into this category or or there can be you know some data which needs to be there for the five years so some of these things will you know always hold you back for going for accreditation so uh, if if you are given an opportunity of you know you can submit one year data and you can go for accreditation that is very easy and you know that is very helpful for all the uh, institutes and then uh, they want to give a feedback for the colleges uh, you know who are applying for the uh, pack like you know looking at what is there what is not there they can you know identify some institutes motivate them you know hand hold these eligible institutes to uh, uplift the quality of education or you know academic and uh, co curricular curricular co curricular and extra curricular activities also so all of this and uh, you know this will the whole whole process of pack can help the applying institutes to build confidence you know or to understand how the uh, documentation process can be done or how where in way, which areas the uh, you know which gray areas can be changed or you know uh, uh, where you can work for the quality enhancement so basic objectives are these now what are the guidelines the guidelines for pack is you know the eligibility here is one year old college even if you are you know you need not be 
um, so many years or anything. The basic eligibility is you need to have one year old college. So uh, when we talk about one year, it is very clearly mentioned that one year consisting consists of a batch enrollment and the same batch result, one year result, not the semester results. So enrollment to the result that that particular uh, tenure we take it as one year under the pack. Now pack is valid for two years. And any institute can go for PAC only for two terms, not more than that. And uh, uh, PAC has got nothing to do with any cycles. Like, you know, in, in the regular accreditation, we have first cycle, second cycle, third cycle. And each of these cycles go for five years. Uh, but here in PAC, it is not associated with any cycles. The processing fee is 10,000 rupees plus GST. If, uh, uh, if the institute doesn't get accredited in the first chance, after six months, you can reapply and there will be a virtual peer team visit. Uh, I, I regret for the uh, typo error there. That is virtual peer team visit. It has to be peer, not the pit. Uh, and then uh, it is expected that all the institutes who are going for PAC should have uh, all the documents on a public disclosure. Uh, that is, you know, you will have to put in all the documents on the institutional website that is what is being expected and this is the common one uh, what we have for the regular accreditation also and once you submit the data on the portal there are no chances for getting the data modified uh, you know whether from the institute or from the NAC side there is a grievance cell available uh, uh, you know where you, in case if you feel that uh, no my I think uh, my college should have got more scores and uh, um, we have not, I mean, any kind of grievances related to PAC, uh, the, you can always contact a grievance cell, which is available. And the marks have been transparent, very transparent when it, when it comes to the PAC. Uh, but uh, when we talk about the NAC process, you don't have uh, the benchmarks transparent. Like, you know, uh, uh, in, in the last five years, if they are asking about the number of teachers available in the college uh, against the sanctioned post, how much percentage? Uh, in case if you have 40%, how much score? In case if you have 50%, how much score? That is not uh, transparent when it comes to the previous, I mean, the regular accreditation process. But in fact, they have given. Like in case if you have 20%, how much score you will get? In case if you get 30 to 40, how much score? That all we'll be discussing in the, uh, in the future slides. So uh, here, the marks, that is the grades are transparent. And uh, again, uh, again, I'm telling the grades are from 0, 1, and 2. Only three grades, but wherein in the previous one, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, coming, to the, uh, uh, coming to the data submission part, there is uh, again a DVV format wherein you will have to fill in the uh, uh, data. There are 10 quantitative questions wherein you will have to give the numbers for uh, uh, the questions as per in the format. And there are 20 qualitative questions. So uh, out of uh, 40 scores, you need to get 15 scores. Like uh, 15 is your pass percent. Not the percentage, 15 is your pass marks out of 40. Okay, uh, so what data we need to fill in when we had to go for uh, the pack? Uh, in first, and per first and foremost thing is, you know, the institute should get uh, registered on the NAC portal. You know, uh, in the NAC website, when you open the website, there is something called an uh, apply online. When you click there, uh, uh, scroll down the whole page to the bottom and you get the apply online uh, 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 tab. When you click on the apply online, you have a uh, institutional registration format. So for that institutional registration, you need to have the AI sheet, a, uh, AISHE uh, ID, that is AISHE ID. All India uh, Survey of Higher Education, uh, that ID you need to use and get your institute uh, registered on the NAC portal. Again, I, I keep telling this every time, uh, your registration on the NAC portal doesn't mean that you are ready for accreditation. So you can get your institute name registered on the NAC portal and you can leave it for any number of years you want. That is how it is. Right. So the information you need to give about, uh, uh, you know, in your uh, uh, institutional information part is you need to give the ICI ID, the name of the higher education institute, which is going for uh, PAC and the date of establishment. Uh, your date of establishment is usually there on the 
government uh, order or uh, the um, uh, the inst uh, university order okay so that becomes the date of establishment and uh, when it comes to the building uh, details you need to give whether you have an uh, own building or the rented building okay uh, so you need to uh, you need to give the data whether you have an uh, own building or a rented building you need to give the data about uh, institutional website name of the head of the institution name of the iqac coordinator location location is as per the geotagging that is you know on the google map whatever uh, longitude latitude and all that data you will also have to give here along with that you will also have to mention whether uh, your institute is located in a hilly area or a tribal area or a, or a, you know urban rural places and uh, uh, whether have you completed any one full academic year that also you need to give in case uh, which academic year you have completed that also you need to mention like you know 2021-22 or 2019-20 uh, uh, that, that data you will have to give because that is the data they need to capture in the whole uh, uh, further question. Then coming to the type of the institute, whether the institute is a day shift, uh, uh, you know, whether you are offering the programs for day shift, evening shift, night shift or uh, uh, and the data which you are, uh, you know, and what kind of uh, institute it is, whether it is a co-ed or a boys college or a girls college, you know, or women's college. So, um, and, and you, you need to give data about the uh, management also, whether it is a, a government aided college, private, aid, private uh, aided college, self-financed institute, all that and status of the institute also, like, you know, whether it is an affiliated college or an university, in university, again, whether it is a deemed to be university, state university, or uh, uh, you know, private university, and uh, uh, whether it is an autonomous institute, uh, which jurisdiction does it fall into? Jurisdiction here is, you know, there are some standalone institutes, like, you know, they doesn't fall under any, uh, what say, they doesn't fall under any university or, you know, they, do, they are not affiliated, they are not autonomous, they are standalone institutes. So in case if it is a standalone institute, uh, uh, what is the statutory regulation authority for them? And uh, uh, in uh, uh, statutory regulatory authority is usually, you know, in case if it is an MBA program, it comes under AICT. Uh, if it is an engineering pro program, it comes under AICT. If it is a medical college, it comes under the Medical Council of India. If it is a nursing program, then it comes under the, uh, you know, Nursing Council of India. So likewise, you know, which is the statutory authority if you are an affiliated or autonomous institute. In case if you are a standalone institute, do you have all India uh, university equivalence? Uh, sorry, association of uh, universities equivalence. And uh, you also have to give a data about how many PhD teachers are available at, on the campus, uh, on, on records, I would say, rather than on campus, on record. And uh, what are the mandatory committees which are there functioning at the institute, whether the institute has a, a MIS, that is a management information system. And you also have to give data about whether uh, the programs which are offering are uh, CBCS or not. Uh, that is choice based credit system or not. Okay, these are the basic information. Uh, you know, this has got nothing to do with your scores or anything. Then coming to the qualitative, sorry, quantitative questions. Now, quantitative question, again, you know, uh, just for the information, there are two kind of questions. We usually call them as metrics. Uh, these two questions are, one is quantitative metrics. The other one is qualitative metric. Quantitative metric is you need to give the data on quantity, but when it comes to the quality, it is like, you know, you will have a descriptive answers. And here in, in the regular process, we have the, uh, uh, you know, all the description should be given from uh, within 500 words. But here it is 100 to 300 words. 100 is minimum, 300 is maximum. Okay, now coming to the first question, percentage of teachers against the sanctioned post for full-time teachers. Now you have, uh, uh, you know, if you are an AICT institute, uh, if you are an AICT institute, you have uh, uh, the sanctioned post already communicated by the AICT. Uh, so based on that, you will have to calculate and you will have to find out how many uh, 
faculties are there full time teachers are there like uh, now uh, see uh, in in previous slide i was telling about the uh, transparency of scores in case if you have um, just a moment i'll just highlight this okay uh, i i suppose you can see the cursor uh, here in case if you are below 50% you will get zero marks 50 to 75 you get one mark uh, one grade and uh, above 75 you get two grades so two is the highest grade likewise uh, you you work on the uh, questions like student teachers ratio if it is uh, above 50 to uh, 50 is to one uh, 50 student to one teacher then it is zero so 30 is to one teacher two 50 is to one teacher it is one uh, cgpa and if it is uh, uh, less than 30 is to 1 then you get the 2, two cgpa this is how the scoring is uh, divided uh, the third question the percentage of uh, teachers uh, sorry percentage of students undertaking field work internship dissertation or skill based learning the percentage of students in that one year, whichever year you are talking about, you know, whichever year you are giving that we have completed this academic year, in that year, how many students? Like, you know, below 10% students, you get zero scores. Just a moment, please. Okay, 10 to 20%, you get one score. Uh, about 20, you get two scores. Now, question four, past percentage. Okay, uh, I, I skipped telling like every, uh, in each of these questions, what is the data you need to submit? Okay, now when you talk about the percentage of teachers against sanctioned post, uh, here you need to have the appointment order of that and uh, uh, if possible, the uh, salary statement, if possible. Like, you, uh, you know, sometimes you, you have the appointment orders with you and... Uh, uh, the further authentic data uh, you need to have either is the timetable or their class taken attendance or the salary statement. Any one of these would go. Uh, but you should ensure that, you know, uh, the load of the teacher, when you are whenever you talk about uh, uh, teacher working load, it should be 90% and more. So that is where your full-time teacher is considered. Uh, coming to the teacher-student ratio, uh, all the list of teachers which are available and all the students which are available on the campus. So that data you need to provide here. Coming to the third question, percentage of students undertaking fieldwork, project work. The evidence you need to keep here is all the students who are involved into fieldwork, project work, internship, dissertation, skill-based learning and all. So here you need to have the certificate of the uh, completion and majorly when you talk about the completion certificate it can be uh, from the external agencies uh, because you know internship if they go to any companies they they'll give the internship certificate and uh, dissertation is as per the university requirement so you will have that certificate wherein uh, hod uh, the guide and the principal signs on that copy that copy should be there that certificate and uh, skill-based learning in case, you know, if you're talking about any certificate programs or if you're talking about any value-added courses which are offered at the institute, that also you can show here. The number of, uh, 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 you know, the number of students you claim that each student's data should be here. And one thing you need to remember here is, you know, say, for example, uh, Maya Salimat, a student of this particular year, has done field work. She has also done an internship. She has also done a dissertation. In Even in this case, there cannot be three counts taken. There can be only one count taken. So uh, that is how you need to give the data. Now coming to the past percentage of the student, again, uh, below 40% is zero score and above 40% is, uh, sorry, below 40% is uh, uh, zero score, above 50% is two score. Uh, now when we talk about the past percentage, you need to have the, uh, evidence of uh, the result sheet announced by the university uh, wherein you know you have the controller of examination sign and signature or the document which is downloaded from the university website that also can go and uh, question number five number of research papers books 
book chapters, conferences, proceedings, or patents published. If it is below 5, it is 0 score. Above 10, it is 2 score. Uh, 5 to 10 is 1 score. Now, here, when you are talking about the uh, publication or books, chapters, and all of these, you need to have evidence. Like, uh, if it is a research paper published, you need to have that uh, uh, publication copy wherein, you know, the institute name, faculty name, and uh, uh, the title, the journal name, issue number, volume number is explained. And conference proceeding, the ISBN number or the IS is uh, a number of that uh, uh, conference. And the uh, book chapters, uh, if you have contributed to the book, um, you know, the, the cover page of the book and the index sheet where the faculty name is mentioned and the first sheet of the, uh, the chapter where your name is mentioned so all that and when if you have any patents published the publication copy of the patent that also uh, you can give it here as an evidence uh, coming to the sixth question student computer ratio again uh, 50 computers sorry 50 students to one computer uh, above that you will have uh, uh, zero scores below 30 percent uh, sorry uh, below 30 is to 1 it will be uh, two scores now here you will have to give the data of the number of computers you are you have on the campus that is you know your stock register your bills of uh, purchase of those computers whichever number of years you have purchased it like you know uh, i have seen some institutes some very old institutes they have around 500 computers I mean, I'm just giving a random number. If they have uh, 500 computers, they need to give all the bills of those 500 computers, right? So that is how you need to give the data about. And coming to the seventh uh, question, percentage of classrooms and seminar halls with ICT facility. So below 10% is zero. Any number of classrooms you have, that number of classrooms you need to mention. And out of which, uh, how, many of the, uh, how many of the classrooms are ICT facilitated? So that you need to give data below 10 percent is uh, zero about 20 percent is uh, two so uh, see uh, the scores you know i whenever i see these scores i feel it is very easy for any institute to get provisionally accredited i feel uh, i mean my personal experience coming to uh, uh, the evidences for the seventh question you need to uh, have the building plan of the uh, uh, you know of the uh, you know of the college wherein uh, you need to highlight which class is where and all that data you need to have and along with that uh, whatever ICTs you have you need to have a geotagged photo of those uh, classrooms you know um, uh, wherein you know on the on the classroom you have a name of that classroom like you know uh, we usually have classroom number uh, 10 5 4 or you know lecture hall number 5 6 whatever or uh, you have a, uh, you know, in, on seminar hall or auditorium, you have uh, uh, APJ Abdul Kalam hall or anything like that. That name should be shown. Uh, you know, the classroom should be shown from that outside area. Take a photo of uh, uh, the inside uh, uh, area where you can highlight the, I mean, where you can show the projector, the smart class or, uh, uh, you know, the ICT facility, whatever facility you are talking, you need to take a geotag photo. Uh, highlighting all of this okay and uh, coming to the eighth question internet connection and the wi-fi facility available in the institute if it is uh, below 10 mbps it is zero above 10 m 20 mbps it is uh, uh, two score now here when you talk about internet connection you usually have that uh, contract between you and the lease line provider that contract you can show and the bills uh, you know annual bills which you are paying to them that also you can show Okay, question number nine, number of uh, curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular, cultural sports events organized by the institution below five in that year, you get zero, above 10, you get two scores, uh, five to 10, you get one score. Now, uh, the data here you need to have is all those uh, events, circulars, you know, number of participants, attendance, um, in case if it is cultural program and the sports program, you need to uh, also have the uh, winners list, you know, certificates and the expenditure statement, whatever program you are claiming here, you need to have all of this and ensure when you're talking about attendance, the attendance is not present and absent A and P mark, the attendance should always be preferably for this kind of programs, it should be signed copy by the student. Okay, uh, question number 10. 
number of faculty development programs, professional development programs, administrative training, orientation, capacity building programs organized by the institute. Like here, uh, see here, one thing you need to be very careful is you do a lot of programs for faculty development, but non-teaching staff or the administrative staff, we don't do many of the institutes. Uh, I'm not, when I say you, I also talk about uh, my own institute. I'm, I'm generally talking. Okay, so most of the institutes fail in conducting the skill development programs for the non-teaching staff or the administrative staff. So uh, here is the question which asks about uh, how many programs do you have? Now here I can give you one hint. Now when you're talking about two, like two faculty development in one year, please ensure you're also doing two uh, staff development programs. Like say for example, you know, you, you, uh, you have a lot of non-teaching staff. Usually they'll be using computers. Give them a training on how to use Excel, how to use Word, you know, how to use, uh, uh, you know, the PowerPoints or uh, how to maintain the documentation, all that. Uh, that, that will help you. Or uh, give them some training on communication skills because uh, uh, every now and then they'll have to interact with the faculties, with the students, with the other stakeholders. So give them some training on communication skills. Like expected here in package, two programs. So two program, anyhow you can do. So you can whenever whenever you're telling you know at least you have done four programs for faculties do some two programs for the administrative and non-teaching staff right so uh, you can work on that now coming to the quantitative sorry qualitative questions i always have a confusion between qualitative and quantitative so um, here uh, qualitative questions the first question is talking much about the advanced learners and the slow learners. Actually, the question was a little lengthy, so I have just cut it with the gist of that. So uh, the first question is, you know, I don't know how many of you have started working with NAC, uh, the regular process in criteria two, there is this one question, probably uh, 2.2.1, I think, uh, um, which talks about the institution has the assessment levels of, uh, you know, identifying, uh, identifying the advanced learners and the slow learners and what are the measures taken. Right, that is how the question is. So uh, the question here is uh, the same question. Here you need to give a description about one, how do you identify the advanced learners and slow learners? And uh, once when you identify the slow learners, what do you do with the slow learners? And once when you have identified the advanced learners, what do you do with the advanced learners? So this is what is expected in your answer. So first you need to explain is the process of identification and then the process of measures uh, to improve improve slow i mean to convert the slow learners to the advanced learners and how do you motivate the advanced learners to be the advanced learners itself so that process you need to give an explanation that is in the description uh, and your description again i'm telling 100 to 300 words only below 100 it will not accept more than 300 it will not accept so that is how you need to look at uh, coming to question number two uh, the student centric methods adopted for enhancing learning experiences. Now here they are talking about the experiment, experimental learning. Here they are talking about, uh, you know, um, student centric method, uh, sorry, the uh, ex experimental learning is one and uh, participative learning is the other one. So what kind of methods are you using? Like, you know, we usually give in description about uh, the case studies, the labs or the quizzes, the assignments, group assignments and all. Or, uh, you know, you also talk about the field work. You also talk about the internship, self-involved learning, right? So these kind of methods, what are the methods which is adopted in that particular year? Again, I'm telling all the data which you are giving has to be given given for that particular academic year, which you have claimed that you have completed recently. Okay, so uh, that you need to be little careful. And uh, question number three is ICT enabled tools you and also the online resources which are used for teaching learning process. Uh, what kind of ICT tools you are using, you know, when earlier, uh, when the whole process of NAC started, 
uh, way back you know early 2000 when we were working on that you know when we when when there was this question on ict enabled tools we used to tell we use ppts we used you know uh, we use slides for the teaching but now when you look at 2022 ict enabled is not comprised only for the ppt or the projectors but there are a lot of things which have come in i have seen you know a lot of my friends do the youtube videos they do blogs you know uh, uh, and and you know they have their own uh, um, video designing method methods for the classroom teaching so there are there are a lot of things which are doing and you know i have also seen some uh, uh, faculties using uh, kahoot uh, you know all these teaching platforms uh, where they make the classroom interesting right and and the students engaging into teaching learning process uh, you know there are also uh, faculties who use moodle there are also faculties who use the uh, uh, videos from npgl and also there are a lot of these so which one are you using that is what uh, is uh, to be explained here mention the extension activities the extension activities criteria 3 of the regular accreditation program now here they are asking all those ex uh, sorry extension activities which are been organized in your institute for the neighborhood community and how are these activities impacting on the development of the students that is how you need to explain here <clears throat> and the evidence is you need to keep here uh, coming back to question number 1 uh, uh, you know when you when you talk about a particular process uh, that process copies you need to keep you need not you know say for example in one year uh, if there are five different programs and you know two semesters two semester into five subjects only if we take five into two 10 10 into five uh, uh, 50 so this is the minimum number of subjects you need to uh, you have in that particular uh, year or even sometimes more than that you need not submit the data of all the 50 subjects you just have to submit the data of samples like you know um, uh, sample subjects uh, subject x advanced learners slow learners identification method subject y the measures taken for uh, improving the advanced learners and uh, sorry slow learners subject z uh, you know there you can show because of the uh, the measures taken there has been an improvement like you know for each category you can take the samples and the, the samples have to be submitted now coming to student centric method again uh, here also you need to have the samples Uh, but you need to give a list of students who are involved into student centric methods and you can also uh, uh, give a list of uh, subjects where you know student centric methods have been used coming to the ict enable tools again you know some sample copies you need to mention see uh, uh, why i talk about sample copies is you know you have a huge data and uh, submitting all this data is not required uh, then coming to the main, uh, fourth question the list of extension activities you need to give their reports and their uh, signature attendance that i think uh, would go with the evidences question number 5 facilities available for teaching learning like here you you talk about all those classrooms available laboratories available library available uh, then you have uh, seminar halls available um, Uh, you know um, the uh, labs i have told additional any teaching learning process you have that all you can give here again uh, geo tagged photo of the facility question number 6 library facilities what kind of library facilities are there that uh, uh, you know along with uh, in the library facility how many journals are there how many databases are there how many e learning resources are there how many e books are there how many cds videos are available all that but also ensure in library you also can show that you know how many footfalls are there in the library like you know you say that i have proquest in my institute we we every year we have a renewal for the proquest or you know delnet or any of these uh, databases you also need to show how many how much is the usage of that like you know how many logins are there per average logins per day so that all you need to give here and uh, question number 7 administrative and academic pursuits in line with the vision and mission this seven num, uh, question number 7 is connected to the 6.1.1 6.1.1 of the regular uh, uh, 
accreditation. Now here they are talking about what is your vision and mission and how is that your all academic and administrative works are in line with achieving the vision and mission explanation of that particular uh, uh, you know uh, concept. Now question number eight effectively uh, leadership in the various practices now uh, leadership here is you know they are talking about uh, participative management they are talking about a decentralized channel of decision making or communication uh, so that you need to give an explanation here uh, coming to question number nine uh, institutional development plan now uh, when we talk about institutional development plan you need to talk you need to talk in terms of what is your strategic plan actually like next two years next five years or next three years how you want your institute to be and the same thing if you have planned for the previous years how much you have achieved that is uh, uh, you know uh, plan design and deployment now coming to question number 10 the measures taken by internal quality assurance cell now uh, all those uh, activities which have been conducted under the iqac that has to be shown here. Now, when we talk about IQAC, it is not necessary the institute should have IQAC, but any kind of quality enhancement and sustenance uh, committee available in the college that all can also take care of this answer. So the 11th question. Uh, coming to uh, the capacity building and skin, skill enhancement initiative, whether uh, uh, you give a soft skill program or a yoga program or you give a career counseling program for your students, that is what you need to explain here in the uh, capacity building and skill enhancement initiatives. Here you can also talk about the certificate programs, add-on uh, programs, value-added programs and all. Um, uh, and the evidence you need to keep here is the syllabi copy of the uh, you know, capacity building program and uh, the schedule and the uh, enrollment of the students and you can also have the attendance uh, signed attendance copy and uh, one step ahead you can also take up the feedback uh, of the programs uh, question number 12 the timely redressal of student grievances do you have an institutional grievance committee what all consist of this committee what are the uh, guidelines for this committee and uh, uh, when we talk about guidelines it is like you know what kind of cases you consider as grievance and uh, how should the students report the grievance? Do you have an in, uh, individual mail ID or a phone number for the grievance? Uh, you know, once the grievance is received, how do you resolve it? Uh, how many days uh, does it take to re resolve that particular uh, uh, grievance? So all that guideline should be there. And uh, how do you create an awareness about this grievance committee in your uh, uh, amongst your students? So that is what is expected to be answered in this question. Coming to question number 13, uh, constitutional obligation. Now, uh, constitutional obligation is all those kind of events, activities which you conduct at your institute. Like say, for example, um, uh, recently in February, there was this Matru Bhasha Divas. Uh, like uh, you, you need to list down such kind of activities like you know Matru Bhasha Divas. You organize an awareness program on Matru Bhasha Divas. What do you do there? Uh, why do you do it? Like any event which you are doing, what do you do? Why? Why do you do it? That explanation for each event would go. And such kind, such kind of programs. How many have you organized in the previous academic year? Like uh, we usually talk about National Youth Day, we talk about Gandhi Jayanti, we talk about Constitutional Day, you talk about, uh, uh, you know, the Matra Bhasha Divas, Sadbhavana Divas, and you talk about, uh, what is that, uh, um, Independence Day, Republic Day, right? In Karnataka, we have this Kannad Rajotsava Dina, you know, I have heard in Maharashtra, they have this uh, Maharaja, uh, Shiv, uh, you know, Shiva, Shivaji Jayanti, you know, they have a huge uh, uh, activities done, a huge number of activities done on those days. And, uh, uh, and you know, it is, it is because you want to inculcate those obligations amongst the uh, present youth, right? So that is what you need to uh, mention. How many number of programs you have conducted? Why were these programs conducted? 
and how are these programs conducted that is uh, that is all now when you talk about the any programs whether it be for uh, capacity building or student obligation or teachers development basic da data i would tell what would suffice one you need to have a circular you need to have the uh, budget and expenditure statement you need to have geo tagged photos of those events and you also need to have the uh, report of that particular event along uh, further the attendance part attendance again wherever i say majorly attendance is signed copy of the participants okay uh, coming to the performance of the institution that is 14th question how do you say that institute is performing towards the distinctiveness like uh, in what way you say that your institute is distinctive that is what you need to explain here in the uh, 14th question now coming to 15th uh, again uh, sorry for the typo error uh, 15th question is you need to list down the strength weakness opportunities and threats of the institute and you need to give an explanation that why pack should be given why provisional accreditation should be given to your college you know you need to defend why it should be given to your college like uh, so these are the questions which you need to answer under the pack so uh, i think i am done with my presentation further uh, uh, it is open for you to go ahead with the questions So this is how your whole uh, process is about, PAC process is about. So I have given you uh, the basic information on what data you need to fill in for the PAC and uh, how do you apply for the PAC. Okay, uh, I have a question from uh, Professor Shushma. She says, what is MIS? MIS is a management information system, uh, a system which is used for e-governance at the institute. Like say, for example, um, admission process. Admission process, any student can just log into your institutional website. There is a, a platform available and he can go through the detailed uh, transparency of the process. Uh, he can get his admission done through the online portal one on the other side when we talk about the hr systems uh, i mean it is actually a total erp mis is a total erp uh, when we talk about hr system in some institutes it is like you know you need not uh, go to the campus in case if you are not well uh, early morning you are not well and you know you cannot go down to the campus on the mobile app or on the institutional login you can use the institutional login go to the institution website you can apply for the leave right so uh, uh, and that data will go down to the uh, uh, whoever concerned i have a question yes ma'am uh, there, there are 10 quantitative questions and 15 qualitative questions yes sir. each answer uh, will get one marks what is the zero one two zero one two yes. not each yes. one yes and we should get 15 out of 40 that is yes. the score yes. yes thank you okay which institute should go for pack ma'am there is uh, 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 there is no specific yeah. rule which institution should go for PAC. First thing is any institute which has completed one academic year can go for PAC. Any institute. Even if your institute is 45 year old also, you can go for PAC. If you have, uh, but the data you will have to give is the previous year. Uh, Rama ma'am, I think I have answered your question. Uh, coming to the next question, uh, Professor Nandish Upadhyay. We are five-year-old college. Should we prepare and apply on the basis of data of academic year 2021 or first academic year of the inception? No, the previous completed academic year, 2021. When you are going for NAC, uh, sorry, when you are going for PAC, it is 2021. 
if you are going for NAC, then it is first uh, last five years, including 2021 to the previous uh, four years. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rama, suppose there is a gap in accreditation, then one should go for PAC or not? Yes, you can go for PAC. See, PAC is usually an idea where, you know, some institutes, uh, after first cycle, they feel that, you know, they are not ready for the second cycle. They can also go for PAC. But the institute which are still in the validity of a NAC accreditation for five years, that is one cycle, I personally suggest you don't go for PAC. I personally suggest. Because you, are, you already have a degree. When you have a degree certificate with you, why do you want to apply for a provisional degree? What is the last date for applying for PAC? Uh, sir, there is no last date as such. Madam, I have a question. Uh, if there is a change in director, for example, in the middle of the academic year, do we need the head of the institute is it better to complete one year before you go for provisional accreditation? No, no, no. It because got nothing to not, do. Not, not needed. Not necessary. Question number 14, elaborate uh, examples of distinctiveness of institute. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Neeru, ma'am, uh, distinctiveness of institute uh, is connected to your question number 7.3.1. Now here, when we talk about distinctiveness of the institution is how do you say that your own institute is different from the other institutes in your locality? Any, any example or any case you can take and you can mention about that. Like uh, uh, one example I would give. I have uh, visited one of the um, one of the women's college uh, you know, one of the women's college in, uh, in little rural parts of uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Now, uh, this institute is uh, not properly connected for the roads and other things. But the college ensures that, you know, there is every facility for that, uh, uh, you know, teaching learning process in the institute. And uh, because, you know, the buses are not properly connected, they have uh, N number of transportation facilities available to the nearby uh, villages where, you know, they have the students coming in from. They have, uh, um, what say, uh, they have the best uh, um, scholarship programs available, free ship programs available for the students who have scored more than, uh, you know, 80% and all. Uh, and and again, you know, based on the income levels of the families that is given. And uh, I have seen uh, um, they're doing good. Uh, you know, at the rural places, having all these number of facilities given for the students and the students doing good, being very happy. And, you know, that is that is something which talks about this distinctiveness. So uh, what way, you know, uh, uh, you know, some institutes I have seen, they talk about holistic education, uh, uh, you know, they talk about women empowerment programs, they, they have a lot of women empowerment programs doing, uh, you know, I'm talking about the other institutes, not the same institute, which I was uh, giving example, I have seen uh, a lot of NSS activities, uh, women empowerment programs, uh, they do a lot of uh, skill development programs. They do a lot of career counseling program. They and uh, along with that, they they see a lot of students coming up with the uh, good uh, scores, ranks for the university and all. So uh, they they say that you know their institute is distinctive because they give the holistic education, overall development uh, for their student. Likewise, you need to give an answers. 
ऑनलाइन Now that's done offline. Online will do. What's all the purpose? Sir, Online again, you know, uh, good thing that you asked me this question. There is a, a specific uh, rule Actually, as per the AICT and UGC. Huh. Okay, it has to be three huh. day, five day, seven day. Uh huh. You know that uh -huh. you need to check. Uh, that is the that will do. Three days or five days. Five days is normal MDP and three days is new workshop. But the thing is that. Our colleagues in the rural uh, Bengal, in the Nodia district, far away from Kolkata. Mm. So the daily people, uh, if you go one day, totally almost hundred, hundred ten kilometers. So online mm. is uh, we can get the resources, but mm. to bring a person from there, it is difficult. We, if we go for online, then mm. it is easy to manage or easy to do. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, thing, last three is, academic years, they are accepting all the online programs. Uh, suppose we are going to apply for the coming year. That is your. Two zero two three is two 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 three. Yes. So right now we are doing some online. That will do, or I have to do, do yes, offline. Yes, yes, it will. It will do. It will do. Online will do, na ma'am. Yes. Okay. But please yes. ensure that you don't have almost all programs online. It's a blend of two, I think. Blend, blend, of two. blend can go. Blend can go. Yes. Oh. Actual okay. intake on that we are going to calculate. Yes, actual sir. student intake actual enrolled number enrolled those admitted in the particular number. session admitted so number the total seats are total in being in bengal the daily within two three colleges others are not totally filled up so actual hmm. number is always less than the approved intake yes. so automatically that number is required is uh, for faculty all the things are going to be minimized is reduced so that is helpful for the management aspect to right. go for fact yes sir oh thank you Okay. Uh, there is a question no, no, in the. One thing, just. Yes. One thing, extension activities. What do you mean by that? Extension activities. What do sir, you mean? Sir, extension by that? activities. They are talking in terms of you know uh, awareness programs or rallies, or you know tree plantation or creating an awareness oh. amongst the. Uh, okay, awareness uh, awareness uh, campaign like that you're talking about. Local local community. Or local what support community you are giving for the local community? Near your to the local villages or the students, huh. uh, yes, uh, kids yes. of the local villages, or yes, some sir. housing concept to the awareness program, local community or panchayat in that way. So, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, there is a question, uh, Dr. Nagajyoti. How much time does this pack process required for completion? Uh, Ma'am, usually any process takes three months time. From registration to result announcement, yes, three months time. Should we submit uh, all the proofs of documents through online? Yes, online uh, on the portal you have an option to submit the data in and and it is like you know five MB data you can upload for each question. In case if it is exceeding that five MB data, you will have to host the documents on your institutional website. And the give and give the link of that data on the net portal. Okay, uh, Doctor Esther, geotag photo is a new thing. How can we produce a geotag photo as an evidence for twenty twenty one? Okay, uh, Madam, geotagging is you know every phone will have a geotagging. In fact, you know. Uh, if you just go to the camera setting of your mobile, uh, 
you will have a setting where uh, location on off option is there you just have to keep your location on <clears throat> every photo irrespective you know all your smart photos are automatically geo tagged nowadays but uh, uh, but there is an option that you know when you go to the properties of your photo whichever photo is taken there it will show the longitude and latitude that is one with one way of geo tagging the other way of geo tagging is there are a lot of uh, um, apps available on the mobile wherein you can uh, do the geo tagging what i'll do is i'll just send uh, some photos uh, of the geo tagging that you can uh, look into okay uh, dr parbin sultana i think uh, something about the geo tagging photos i told about the geo tagging if i take photos from my mobile will that work uh, will that not work ma'am actually it will work unless you know you need to have that uh, uh, location open in your mobile i'll just show that i'm just looking at one photo if if i have that um i don't know if you can see is it is it uh, visible or or i would simply say you know pick up any photo which is in your camera go to the details of the photo go to the details of the photo in that you will usually get the location if it is not there then you have not on the geo tagging usually a location link will come you need to keep that location on that setting you can do in your camera mobile camera will do or i'll also share some uh, apps on the mobile you can just download that and uh, use that app only as the camera so automatically that geo tagging thing will come down okay uh, do we have some questions uh, professor kirti madam skill based course is incorporated in most of the program syllabus as such we don't give certificate how then how to add it okay um, if you have skill based courses as a part of the syllabus and you are doing some activities as a part of your syllabus you can take a photos of that or uh, you can prepare see nowadays for every every small thing happening at the class students are uh, tend to take photos you can collect photos from them like any presentation they take a photo any group activity they take a photo if you have any of that you can take that and make a report of one subject you know one subject on so many you know on particular day this was done on particular day uh, x day uh um, presentation was done why day there was a group case study z day there was something else so you can prepare a report of each subject and you can submit no problem again you know you will have to prepare a sample only thank you okay any other questions Ma'am, you are doing very well. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, the introduction is very useful. Thank you. Uh, the thing is, when we start doing only, we will have questions. Yes, ma'am. Can we send the questions and get the questions yes, from you? You can do that. You can do that. You have been. I think you have been calling me also. I have been attending your calls and yes, giving yes. answers. <laughs> I have to thank you for that. Uh, my thank pleasure, ma'am. My pleasure. okay uh, in case if you have any questions you can please go ahead with the questions uh, later i'll send the feedback form please fill the feedback form and uh, uh, by uh, maybe tomorrow end of the day or day after tomorrow you will uh, get your certificates uh, in the group i'll i'll share it on the group 
however as uh, kirti ma'am mentioned you will you know you will not get questions uh, right now you know after listening the session but you will get the uh, questions once you start working on the uh, on the program you know on the whole process of uh, pack but otherwise uh, my sincere suggestions is um, go ahead start working on the pack in case if you are not uh, confident on going for nac process so um, all the best once again thank you so much for attending the session